Hi everybody, let's build a demo. So right now the deadline uh, demo party is, or the deadline demo scene party is running in Berlin. And uh, AJ decided to have a small competition where we build like a small demo that includes a cube and a plane with a given soundtrack and uh, yeah, have a competition there to see what we come up with. And I thought it would actually be a very good idea to record the stuff. It should be a fast demo, so I hope the whole demo shouldn't be longer than two hours. And um, I can show you how I would go about that, uh, the process and stuff. And um, so I have nothing prepared. I have, I think, okay, cubes. I love cubes, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And um, yeah. Uh, Let's see how far we can get in two hours. So um, let's start by creating a project. Yes, one day we have a new project there, but for now let's just create a render target and a uh, layer 2D here and then we group this into simulation, combine it into a new symbol and we call this guy, I am extra, no, actually. We want to release this as still, so it will be still. And I thought uh, Cupid, nee, Cupid might be uh, uh, an interesting name. So let's just stupid Cupid. Cupid. Um, uh, and then we call this uh, maybe also Cupid demo. So the hardest thing always is naming stuff. And uh, fast demo for the to combine this, we don't want to have a time clip there. Um, so the first uh, initializing the .NET framework takes a while, so now combining is much faster. We double click here to insert. Now we want to have a soundtrack. Uh, I already downloaded a soundtrack to our new project. We take the file picker and we go to user still. I think I put it somewhere here. Cupid, that is it. So, and it's a wave. Um, actually, that being a wave is bad because we later we have to convert this to an MP3. I have to see, I guess there must be some stuff online. So let's uh, see uh, about like the BPM rate here. So to be honest, I, 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 I didn't even listen to the soundtrack, so uh, uh, it's like uh, very badly prepared. So I think like uh, it should be there, I guess. So if we drag this here, maybe with shift. So maybe like so. Does this match the beat? And here's the first. Oh no, here. So it, I guess. Like this is the first real bar, so we try to align it. That is, uh, I guess that's at four. So let's see how this looks if we take an any value and we pipe this into a blob. So like this is the this is the next thing. Let's see how we can so it looks like it's precisely 120, so I shouldn't have, or actually no, it's not. It should be, there's a little bit off there. Ah, interesting. Okay. But it's a, it's a short soundtrack, so it's only, uh, what is this? So it's one minute, one minute and, uh, I don't know, like two seconds here or so. Um, which is good. Short is, short is bad. So. So let's see 
Um, so one thing I'm normally doing when making a demo like this, I, I cut this into like some parts so I have an idea of like some kind of like development. So obviously the, the, the intro. Actually, I, um, I wonder if you can actually, if I'm recording the, uh, the desktop audio here, let's check this. So I think obviously like this is where the actual sound kicks in. So uh, let's create a group here and uh, let's create a time clip and let's rename this kind of into some content. This is where we want to have some effect. Yeah, we want to have some effect here, tent clip. Like, wow. wow. So there's a small breakdown here, which is good to know. So that, and we have like these guys here, this, the, the main scene. So I'm pretty sure we want to eventually have something synced to that. So and it's repeating here. So we can actually have another time clip here. Let's call this uh, lead synth, maybe. So it starts there. And let's like, create a time scratch here. So um, I thought one thing we could do is like we we basically create a a, a cube that is made out of cubes. And maybe we uh, bend the roots a little bit and say, yeah, it's a plane, but nobody said it's a plane should be on the ground. So I think I think it's better to have like the the, the plane, maybe it's like a wall or something, and uh, the cube is in front of that. And then we basically break the cube apart and maybe there's something inside there, maybe another cube or something which would be feasible if we use like the select operator. So we can select a cube that is made out of teeny weeny cubes and maybe it's like rotating there. And so, and we should do something with the wall there beside being, maybe we can like, we can take the Take the ball and distort it towards the cube, and then it's uh, it's doing stuff. So very very precise uh, definition here. So okay, let's let's uh, let's start with building some scene here. So we have uh, let's take the render camera because we don't want to have like any camera animation. It sounds like too much work having a random camera animation. Um, I'm not really sure how we go about like the. So if you have a random camera, so let's let's set up a scene here. Uh, so we have a group. And let's create like a quad mesh and draw mesh. We pipe that into the group, into the random camera, into our render target here. So it was that into our render target. It's our output. We don't need the blob anymore. Let's clean this up a little bit. And the 
take a cube or mesh, put this into the group here, Let's see how this looks. So we obviously this needs to be let's pin this let's pin this there. Oh let's pin this there for starter. So obviously this needs to be bigger. So let's make it but this is stupid, it doesn't have like a uni unified scale here. Oh no, here, here it has like there is a scale. That looks really stupid. And let's change the cutting to none so we see where it is. Okay, there it is. The camera is already rotating because we have idle motion here. And actually this is um, it's actually bad for the effect we want to achieve because we can't have like a the random camera. So how do we do this? This the random camera is not. I think like let's take a normal camera and we just take like a random positions and the random positions will always be on one side of the plane. I think this makes it easier. So let's first. Does this actually have a center? No, it, it has a center. So let's enable this guy here. Um, and um, let's start with. So like, uh, what is it like? X always like X is red, and it should always point towards the right. And this is, should always define the front camera. I uh, like thinking for this for like a couple of seconds really helps me to uh, lay out the scene properly. So we now take the, the quad mesh and we move it back. So like a little bit into the back here. So make it precise, like for. And make the quad mesh a little bit larger. Then we have the cube in the center. I think this is just this is just perfect. And then we want to have like a random. So, so let's also definitely we need some stuff here like uh, later. Let's make a let's some, no like let's let's uh, wait with the effects for later. So we want. But we want uh, a point light here. I think it could go here. It doesn't need to be in front of the camera. Um, and I think so the point light is there. So now it's like in front of this. And I think we want to uh, move this with. This might be like a first nice set that we actually we have like this cube here and uh, on every do, 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 the point light moves its position so it might be a good first step so we can just take the counter then we have uh, we use a pillar noise and we drive I think like this is this is a horrible setting here that we uh, that the frequency is above the to override time. Let's quickly change this. So we uh, pearl noise is a code op. So we quickly jump to the code. Oh, this is this is no, this is confusing. Yeah, pearl noise, pearl noise three, and then we can just change the order of things here because I think so that here with uh, the question became already what what does override time do uh, if it's connected then it uses this as the sample value. And uh, if it's not connected, then we use like the, the scene time here. Oh, and there's still like this update camera there. And camera, we don't want that either. So we compile these, let's debug output. So, and now, um, so like the reason why I just did this, so if I now like take this guy here and say turn in noise three, connected to override time which that is much more makes much more sense than connecting it automatically to frequency so and we take this and we connect this to our uh, position here from the right then we okay so we, uh, we I guess we change the frequency a little bit here the, 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 the scale maybe the scale we change this okay 
And maybe you can actually animate it slightly. Then um, we probably want to set some environment here. So we, um, here we are in front. And unless we set the environment, we always have like this, uh, this default uh, environment here. Maybe you also set a material quickly to have a little bit more of a reflective look. And then we do of the second it has to go after the material uh, after the camera. So that's it, environment. And then we take a blob. I uh, remove the resolution here a little bit so we have we can have uh, a lot ABL, we convert this into a cube map, and we see the cube map into the set environment. We change the opacity here, and then we can move this guy around. So maybe we first change the feather, so it's a, it's a really hard light. Let's see, maybe this live update here. And then we uh, decrease the roundness and we maybe move this here. So or one day I want to have like a gizmo here to drag it around. It's, believe me, it's coming. It would be so great. So then uh, we increase the, like I hold, I'm holding control now to increase the brightness here. So we have some values bigger than uh, one. Um, and now if we, uh, I think we can actually Enable like this render this as a background. We can increase the uh, exposure here. Um, the background blur. I would expect it so to see something here. Here we have the point light. We render into the render target. Let's go put it there. here if we increase the color here it sh this changes if we change the size of the height it has some effect here so we see that it's um, if, it, if I tone it uh, it changes a little bit maybe if we increase the, the size further so it goes until it goes to the poles a little bit annoying that this guy doesn't get any light from the top. Which I thought it should get this. If I move this guy here left right. Ah, so it was behind the cube. Um, okay, now it's way too here let's make it a little bit smaller maybe we can move it towards the top a little bit so it's more like a like there a little bit okay so we have some color here um, let's also I mean we could change we could make the uh, make the uh, the purlin noise also like, uh, like so like the, the point light right now it has always the same color so maybe we can later randomize this a little bit for now let's let's tone it a little bit into, and let's make it orange or something maybe we can increase also like the, the scale here I think the the plane in the background it should be very very far and it should fade out towards black so if we change the color here a little bit to darkness if we decrease the roughness here a little bit if we, i think this is way too way too light here so Maybe, um, so let's check again, we, so the, the point light, I think it's, let's move a little bit closer towards the cube. So. Let's 
Not too bad actually. So let's overwrite the color of our plane here, uh, the material. So let's set the material. So because right now in the background we have like this bright light, and I think this is the reflection of the light on the plane. And if we increase the roughness here, yeah, it should go away a little bit. I think it's much better. And we can change the change the the color here a little bit towards like a cool tone. So currently, like the the light is dancing around the cube, but it's in this case it's frequently behind the cube, and we can fix this by offsetting the Perlin noise. And we in the, in the beginning we thought about axis, and we know that uh, the z is towards us, so we can actually uh, just add a value here. So we click here, add back three, and then uh, we drag this here. We can push this a little bit towards the camera. And maybe like a little bit towards the up. Maybe it's a little bit too much. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, okay, now how are, we, how are we actually doing on time? I didn't stop, so now it's like three. Okay, maybe one more hour. Um, Actually, I already like this. Um, so in the beginning, I guess we should maybe so to at least be a little bit correct. I guess we should we should mention that it's a plane. And maybe we create a texture to put it in the background to say, hey, see, it's a plane. It even, it even has, like, let's say, like a raster background or so. So let's create a raster here. And let's uh, set the resolution. So by default, it uses the resolution coming from the good point. So let's switch this to Full HD. And uh, since the texture we want to use is square, we should overwrite the scale here and say the resolution is know, like 1024. Then we put this into our, let's, let's say we are using emissive. Every time we use emissive, we also have to change this guy here. So not too stupid, uh, but we probably need some kind of, um, I wonder, so like there is this transform UV, so we use transform UV, and we scale this down a little bit, so we, uh, oh no, oh, oh. why is it not centered, oh, okay, what is it, I mean, 20, it's too much, too much. Okay, and this guy here, so let's change the line width a little bit. Okay, that's actually not too bad. And uh, so right now I'm using emissive, which is kind of stupid because then it never stops. Um, but I want it to stop eventually, uh, so as if like there's a spotlight here and then it goes into the, the darkness. Maybe we could do this by setting a fork. So it's a fork. So this makes it very dark here. Uh, stupid me. So the um, no, actually this correct should be in front of this guy here. But this doesn't set ah it's being drawn unlit of course. Which is okay, but not if you look at the other side because there we have this, we have the IVL. Which might be okay if we fake it. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like this border here, which um, right now is uh, not really nice. 
the problem is if I make it dark, then eventually you will see that it's uh, that you will still see the border there. And if I increase the size drastically, make it like big, big, and what was it? Oh, not this, but the UV. Let's make this like it was before. Then the border there gets really ugly and annoying and eventually all we need we need screen space reflection there and uh, we change the material here and change this to should we pick up some of the nice. So maybe I just take the background distance and the distance. Okay. This, is, this is a wrong effect. If I, ah, I think I can cut it off. This doesn't really help me. So what I, what I would want to... So one day we need to have like a rotation thing here so we can actually change the environment. But for now, I think um, let's fake it and let's just move the, the, the sky a little bit somewhere else. And maybe we can also reduce the so the exposure is. I think having some exposure is actually nice, so we see some ex reflection there. So let's see how it looks from a different side. But we for the background. So let's. Blur this a little bit less, and let's remove like the, the color here, so we have some some space. Okay. So now, um, so. So actually, I think the, the initial thing is actually working pretty nicely. So um, I wonder if we should change the camera always like on the base or something. And starting from here. So we have... Um, Let's take a counter, counter, and we multiply this with a number, and then we convert it to an int, to int, and then we use this as a seed value for our random camera. And then we have, we take this and animate it and say, okay, starting from here, it's one, but before this, it's zero. So, um, and these are like constant values. So this is basically like a switch. So right now, actually, initially I thought, okay, we make this like four on the floor. the problem that we are behind the I think we, we can we can change this by using since we are rotating about uh, around this cube anyways we can build a random camera on the fly so maybe we clean this up a little bit we had some stuff there this we don't need anymore so let's let's build our random camera again we take the camera we pipe this into the camera, we pipe this into the point light, so this is the camera. And then we, by moving random, piping random variables into the target, it should actually be the same thing. And we already did this here, so we duplicate uh, it and pipe this into the target and see what's, what's happening here. Target. Um, 
There you go. Uh, okay. Um, so we are overwriting the time here. And I think what we need is to also... I think we probably uh, need to have some animation there. So if the camera be moving. So we also add a little bit of time here. So uh, the idea is that this will move continuously. So like if we move this off. And right now we have moved it to the target. And I think this was wrong because we want to have, we want to be the target, the center, and we want to move the position. And obviously this has to be, scale has to be bigger. And now again we have to move like these, these guys around here. So um, we want to move the camera back a little bit. And we want to scale like these ranges so that uh, the up-down ratio is not that big and uh, this is also not so big but the uh, left-right ratio is big. Okay. Let's turn up the animation on so we can tweak this. So it's actually it's not too bad here so it's moving around nicely. Um, we can now increase like the scale here, so we uh, we can find. Actually, it's, it's, I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. Okay, we are in the cube sometimes, which is stupid. Besides, this is not too bad. So of course the frequency is a little bit too high, but on the other hand, this demo scene, the soundtrack is fast paced, so fast is probably nice. Okay, I think I, I actually I, I like that. So um, and then every time we have uh, like we have something like uh, let's turn this off again. So like if it's moving inside the cube like this guy. So actually this is okay from the transition, but sometimes it's over. Then we can just add another offset and then for like this short period we just add a random value to uh, fix just that seat here. So now if we enable this again, let's make it on the floor. Maybe we make this a little bit less hectic by decreasing the octaves here. And actually, I, I, I think it's kind of awkward that we don't have um, an offset for each value. Mm. But it's what it is. Uh, uh, how do I actually silence this? I have to pause this for a while. A second.
Bam. I could have paused the recording. I still loading learning OBS. Okay, so there, there we go again. So um, actually, I think this is a this is good enough for a demo. So we can fill this out with some effects now. So like the uh, and we don't have that much time anyways. It's a fast pot. So um, let's break away the cube. So this this now now it's going to be fun. So we don't need all this anymore. Don't come on, can go away. This we can sort nicely. Or we can actually make this one here. Move this. Um, so uh, we have the cube here. And the cool thing, the cube has like, uh, we didn't do anything with the cube. Um, which means it has a unit one length here. So we could rebuild the cube with other cubes. So let's uh, let's quickly create a group here. And if we take a hundred like grid points and draw measured points and take another cube and uh, we say we have like uh, I don't know like if we have ten by ten by ten it's not that it's like a thousand. This should be simple. Zook. Zook. Let's, let's, let's activate this guy here. So we see the frame rate is going crazy because right now we are like drawing them on top of each other with like a, like. But if we shrink this down, there we have our cubes. With, and it might be uh, yeah, it might be fun to play with these. So because now we um, so. So it might be like, a, oh, okay, it's like, you know, this effect, oh, it's many, could be an interesting plaything here. And now we have everything, let's uh, move this, now we have everything in points, and points, points are great. So um, let's, so let's see again, like uh, from the timing here, we have like the initial thing. So in a, in, maybe in the beginning, I think that for the first part, we don't need any camera motion, and we had this, this solution for that earlier here. So we could maybe. So one thing is we could multiply this with a number. We could also animate the increment um, or the weight. So many things. So let's go for like animating the increment here. So we from there the increment is one, and before this the increment is zero, and we change this to a constant interpolation. So Bit. So now here we have like a little bit of like effects which is interesting because we could use this to, 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 to sync some stuff. Mm. Maybe we should move the since like this guy here, this is basically the distance towards the camera. Right. So we, if you move this, we can actually uh, have like also some transition. So I think this is probably over the whole demo we want to animate that for timeline. So let's go in here and say we, uh, we animate this and we start far away. Get closer, so we move this, maybe this down. And I like how it's like flying behind the plane. Okay, well, actually, that's not too bad. Um, so maybe here we insert another keyframe and say like, okay, let's move back again and let's make this into a constant and let's make this into 
smooth horizontal so like uh, it's going slowly in having some a little bit closer and then we are moving back again so we can introduce our effect here so as a fact i thought we would take a select points and um, so we see our gizmo here i think uh, yeah we can already see how we can now like do something with these points and um, actually like this might be already like an interesting thing of like we see how this is like going through slicing through the cube here today people see like oh, something is happening maybe we have the strength a little bit reduced so they're not completely vanishing Can we offset this a little bit? We have some fall off here. This is like, how do I not hide them completely? I guess I have to do, 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 override strength, face, threshold. Just threshold do nothing. I think this is only relevant for noise stuff. This card non selected, and no, we don't need that. So then we'll just modify the, the W. I think there should be like a transform points, and there should be an offset W. And if we add this here, yeah, I think something like this. And I guess if we offset it by 0 0.5, the selection points strength should go only. So, because I never want them to overlap. Now if I move this guy here around, and, and maybe like the fall of, if we, I think if we invert this, we have uh, actually this is this looks like a, so really nice. Uh, surprised here. So let's check uh, the cube has. Uh, so if we move this to precisely through 10, uh, maybe because the fall off is too big. So why are these, why are there still gaps in here? Transform point, I think, good point, right there, there's there. And if we move this. There are still points here, so it's not the selected stuff. Why is it? Why does it have these gaps? I want to have it precisely closed, which would be. What? Why is it? Like, okay. Maybe it's because it is like one off. Hmm. Okay, the, uh, I wonder like, like what is this number? Is it like one divided by nine? I think it's one when we, we, we divide by nine because it's ten cubes in a row, but it's nine gaps. So um, I think this is why this is uh, this weird scale number there. So if we replace this with our now there we have our select points and we can animate this guy this would be like an interesting initial effect i guess so we animated from and it would also be interesting to have like this maybe like something inside to make it glow i don't know how we do this maybe we add like more points there but uh, this would also be nice. So let's uh, first go with uh, we animate this guy here and we have this. So like there we go. Animate. We animate from there to Look like 
looks like nothing at all. This was the best animation ever. So I guess like, like so. I mean like a little bit up. Ooh, this is much faster than I thought it would be. So okay, let's take this. If I'm out pressing I can insert keyframes. So what I'm doing now is like I'm looking for like when is the when is it complete? So it's completely okay. Actually, this was perfectly the ending, but the, the start was too early. So I can remove this guy here and move this over here. So we and maybe with this guy uh, while we are here, we don't want to have any increments in the in the camera animation. So let's go in here, take the counter. Um, and uh, animated again. So we had this. We did this earlier. So we had this increment here. So we say yes. It's okay to have it uh, one there. But now we want to have it zero for a while. And then we just duplicate this guy here. Duplicate keyframes. And of course, this should always be. Everything should be constant. Maybe, so maybe animating this was not a good idea because um, now it's animated. I can't really add like another offset to that, which is maybe it's not a problem. But I think it would be better to have now to do this procedurally, so we don't have to any set too many keyframes. So we. Um, so let's make it like so. We create a, we create a, can we actually, if I use a point, does it have like an, okay, like a point has a position. This is nice because I can then take the position, I can add this position. You know, I have here, like this is going to be animated. And then I can, no, this is going to be animated. And then we have a further noise. And the further noise, this will be our effect position. And then we remove this guy here. Move animation. Move this guy here, center. So now with idle motion, this should like constantly move. And um, I initially thought I would use like something else than a, uh, than this. Oh, wait a second, we wanted to use a cube. So right now this is a sphere, so now it's a box, but if I change the size of the box, it should only be like the inside, yeah, we see how like, oh, this is, actually this is, actually I think you really like, like this guy. So we are cutting out a box of a box, which is kind of meta. But I think we should also, also be possible to rotate this on the side, so it's like the, uh, it's like a, Turned, uh, so, so. And then eventually, if we take like this fall off here and invert it, then I think it should be possible to actually have um, cut out a cube, which is kind of meta, I think. So maybe just to verify that it would actually work, we take like the scale and we shrink it down. Yeah, and there we have a, 
I think you can see the cube there. And if we now like would say transform points and we offset this, these guys even more, then there's our little subcube made of cubes. And we can also like we just for the hell of it, we can actually rotate these guys here with the pearl noise again. Pearl noise and this goes into scale, so we modified drastically for degrees. And we move this and rotate, so now it's like moving inside there. Okay, I think I'm back. I'm starting to like that idea. So we want to hide that in the beginning, and we want to have like this pearl noise guy here. So maybe we, if we animate that later, so I think starting with uh, this guy is good enough. And maybe we offset our points here again. And maybe we invert the fall off again, so it's uh, cutting out the hole there. And we can increase the scale. Okay. So if I increase the scale further, then I mean it cuts off everything. Okay. Nice. So now, um, I mean, later we will add a little bit of um, more uh, more effects there. So right now we um, we are only cutting it off, and now we can build an effect on effect on effect. Like we are at uh, twenty percent here. So let's see how it looks so far. We wanted to. We wanted only to have this effect in the beginning. So uh, let's take this guy here, and if we animate the strength to zero, so we animate this guy here, and then we animate it to one, and then we also animate this guy here, the offset. And we offset it by one. So we, I think we offset it by one. So that it's. Um, This will be a master timeline. Let me take this and we animate it as well. And here we can reduce the offset so we can actually cut off. And then we can animate this a little bit. And then, of course, this should go with the music. rotation guy here. The problem is that we can only do this, uh, we can't really animate this fluently because the um, if you animate this, this will go like nuts because this goes directly into the time. Oh no, actually it will not go nuts. Actually this is nice. We can start with here and we scale this zero. And then eventually we will go into full 3D mode here. 
Ja, das ist gut gewesen, das ist trotzdem schon. So, der we have like a swing point. So we can start to do more stuff with the points here. So maybe we can also um, rotate them. Maybe by random position. So the, the like in here, like the W stays the same. So we can use this for other effects as well. So we can use randomized points. And there the, it should have like this. Uh, I don't know, like does it randomize everything or only the select? No, it randomizes everything. And that's stupid. should only ah it does the it does the opposite maybe like so yeah so every time it's selected now it's basically distorted and we can increase like this guy here yeah so I, I, I think I like that and of course we take the face and we animate the face at the time okay this Way too much. Maybe like a quarter of the speed. Okay. And uh, this could go from here. And we animate the noise. So let's see what is the was completely crazy and uh, we change the frequency a little bit. Does it still like does it resolve something? I think I'm not really happy with this counter thing because it um, it keeps increasing here, even though I rewind the time, and this makes it really hard to control the camera here. So for some stuff, uh, it's just fine. I can force things like the polyon noise or so, but for the camera, I think it would be nice to have a little bit more control. So I think instead of using the counter. Let's just use an, an animate and an value. It also has a frequency, but it's predictable. And we can go for here to, I think there should be like a. It doesn't go up. There's no rate there. Okay, so increase the offset over by time. we could use an endless okay let's maybe we take this to endless mm -hmm. I think it would be nice to have like a step here endless and then endless increment or so I think I, I will add this like in a future update so we uh, we floor this And then we pipe this into our 
This should always be the same, so we get some random cameras. But now every time I rewind here, I should get the, the same camera, which is makes it much more predictable. Okay. it earlier that we we add a little bit of thing that we can uh, animate to get random stuff under control so uh, I think it was it could be that or we could actually use the sum here the sum is actually we should have used the sum in the beginning because it basically has the same thing as add but it's more flexible so so reminder, we have like this, we have now an animation, we use floor to turn this animation to a step. And then this goes into Perlin noise and this drives, uh, we offset this a little bit and this drives the position of the camera. And then we want to get rid of this guy here. So we can just say, okay, for, for a short period of time, we offset this random value. Take the value, we take this here in front of that. Things were just fine, so we uh, animated here, we turned this into a constant, and now we want to offset that into something else. So we move this around, so this might be a nice camera. And then uh, just for, um, of course, we could leave it there, but I think it's a little bit cleaner to go back to the default. So constant here. short intersection blur. Okay, yeah, half of the thing. No, we might also do something with the plane there. So let's let's try to recreate this plane with points. Once again, good points. We don't need the Z dimension. Let's draw some points and let's pipe this into our scene. So obviously right now it's stuck inside the cube. I have to move this back. Uh, I think this would be a center here. And I don't know what was the offset we had for our quad mesh. It's like four. Okay. It's minus four. I know if Right now we have this bound thing here. We can change the mode to cell. And I think we could then, so cell meaning, so the scale defines the distance of these points. So let's increase the size a little bit here. So we can actually see them. And now I want to adjust the scale so they are matching precisely um, other grid points there, so the raster points. So uh, we go to scale and then we Shrink these down, maybe. Let's see. Well, it's getting there. Actually, not too bad. That's one, one, one off. So we can change the center, I guess. Center, center, center. Maybe. So why, 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 why what is like, what is this? Every time I have like these weird numbers, I say, okay, like, why is it such a weird number here? I think my scale is still like, uh, I think the correct scale should be. It looks. 
looks almost all right. Oh. Maybe we, uh, I take this guy here and take a look at how this looks from the front. And for now, let's be disable this guy here. So it there's some weird offset here. So we have the quad mesh and we transform the UV coordinates to 20. This guy here also it has like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What? <laughs> Why is it 9? Ah, I guess so that, that we were there. So it's centered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, it's like 8, 8 grid points. And um, which I guess is, is fine. It looks okay from a texture wise, so why is my cut point here? So what kind of scale factor is this? Okay, also we have right now we have some C fighting, so I move it a little bit in front of the plane. Let's shrink it down a little bit further. I'm not really sure where this is coming from here. So weird. This offset. I guess I can do that. The, the nice thing about the cell mode is now that we can just extend the cells. I think we probably need something even here. And, uh, and it will still be centered. So now I see like we have like this enormous plane of grid points here. And uh, people will think, oh, it's like a texture. But then we start to move these guys, which would be interesting. So um, we don't need to have them orange anymore. And then once again, we use uh, select points. And um, then let's try a point simulation and to move them towards the cube. This would be uh, interesting. So um, let's see if we have like a select point here and we have the gizmo and we move this uh, when we am sphere mode which is good um, if we move this back a little bit and we increase the scale drastically and we always update this uh, if we always reset this we simulate a noise. Set this. There's some stuff happening there. I think we use this gear here. Let's drastically decrease the frequency. Maybe let this go here for a while. So you see what's happening. happening. Okay, we. Getting there, it's moving, and um, there's the current noise. So, 
So we have something we are simulating. Right now the simulating uh, simulation looks static because we are not animating the face, but now like if we use the anim animate the animation face, they are jiggling around a little bit. Okay, right now they are way too big. So later we want to have like a little bit of let's take the fog here. And now we want to ha have them stay at the grid, but around the behind the cube, they should actually uh, should move. So how do we do this? We can so we have the select point here, which we see is uh, right now it's like more or less centered, um, and of course it should be a little bit far bigger. And I think we can just mix or blend, maybe is there a mix point. This will create a new buffer to original buffer. And now if we blend the value, it should go back to norm, yes. And I think there, okay, like here we have a bunch of modes that don't have an enumeration, great. Um, I think we add a new blend mode here that uses the W attribute to blend between these. So a little bit of shader coding even for a fast pot. That's nice. Next point, go in there. Yes, I know what I'm doing. Go in there. Which shader edit. So we have mixed points here, which does uh, <laughs> a great many things. Um, so there's a combined node here, which we are currently not using. Oh, look at this shader, isn't it beautiful? So 20 line, 25 lines of code. So um, we need both points, anyways. But then we have this blend factor here. And let's say we, uh, we compute the blend factor. F. And let's just say this is a variable and take these guys. And this is like, uh, oh, oh, what, what did I do? F. So, so now if I compile, everything should be original. And then I can say, uh, okay, let's. If the combine mode is zero, so the default, we don't want to change the default behavior, then we do nothing with the blend factor, but if the combine mode is, actually, the combine mode was more, my intention was that, okay, if I have, if the number doesn't match, I need to find a solution so if we have two point count, uh, two point buffers, and their length might not be the same. So I think this was the combined mode. For now, let's just rename this into blend mode. And then we can figure this uh, in a later version, figure out how to combine different size buffers. And then we can solve our problem. Our problem is we want to use, we want to combine the blend factor with the W parameter. So we, we, we say F equals multiply PW. And now we might also want to go into Let's take the blend points here. Is it blend point? Blend mode. So this is what they're called. It's called mix. So consistent naming here. Mix points. So let's uh, add the default parameter. So quickly clean up these. Let's 
say we have a private enumeration for this, the blend modes. And the first one is the spray blend, and the second one is uh, use point B. because we have like the we can use both of these so um two four eight so let's uh, do here and then of course we want to have like these uh we have the two buffers here we have the blend mode and here it's actually called blend mode not combined mode which is good and then we use the map type map type Shader and then we also if else if blend mode is bigger than 100 or if and then we are like consistent here. Okay, so everything compiles and now it should be possible to go in here and say mix points. We have a blend mode and we want to use the W uh, parameter as weight. And um, I'm disappointed. I, 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 I hope so much. I have hoped so much. So why doesn't it, why isn't it not working? So let's see if we draw the original points here, select points. And ex I would have expected that we see um, here we have use the view for size. Okay, there we. This is our selection here. And yes, it's a small selection, so let's let's increase this a little bit. So here's our cube in front. Currently we deactivated Z mode, which drives me insane. And maybe also uh, we move these guys a little bit further towards the front. And now I would have expected if I mix this that it's doing the opposite. No, actually, actually it's, it's working. It's, no, no, you have like it's they're staying in the grid whenever we um, whenever they are in the grid. And um, so currently they are like sinking in there a little bit. So we can do, we can reduce this a little bit by pushing them out away from the plane. So we can simulate directional force. So and now if I push them away, so they would go. Yeah, they should come out, which is not it's actually. Working surprisingly well. Maybe we reduce this a little bit here. And um, I think there should also, uh, we can maybe, now we have to select points here. We can play with the bias. Sometimes this helps to, to smoothen the transition. We also can change the fall off. A little bit too much here. Can you bring them to scale a little bit? Okay, she looks she nice. Oh, they are intersecting. So I guess we need more. Uh, okay, so like we, we have this guy here, but we can also. No, no, watch this. We can also use. 
of transport points. Ach, so, okay, läuft das weiter. So, and then we can actually push the. No, let's, let's just use the normal transport points. And use W is weight. Which means we can now like softly drag these guys here. And I think the, the, the cool thing is, I think we can actually twist these really interestingly so they make some really, uh, really weird. So they can twirl around our, our cube there. And if we then say, okay, uh, we are using W for size, which we Check as we want. And uh, we are transforming the points here. And I think we can offset the W a little bit so they, uh, the points in the background don't get too small. And here we. So we have the offset here. surprised that they still have this um ah wait I, I have to of course blend towards the the final guy here sure it would go into yeah it would so why does it freeze it completely Only using the selection. Ah, stupid me. It should not. We should multiply it. We should actually use it. Shader doesn't work correctly. So we compile it, but um, it doesn't matter if I do this, this, or this, which means that this values doesn't seem to be correctly. We have blend mode and we are not using it. Stupid me. So it should go into the uh, into float and it should be our parameter so we don't why uh, why do we have to count this is also stupid we only need the blend factor and the blend mode and we don't need to count and uh, this goes like so now like the first one is the blend value and the blend mode blend value blend mode and we can try again to multiply these Ah, 
not there we go and um, just now it's doing something The blend value, the blend value still has an effect. Even so I'm in and what is the second one? And the blend factor should okay. So now at least so it works as expected, so the blend factor is no longer being used if I'm in this mode and it's being used in the, in the first mode. Yeah. So, um, to save this guy again, because a, um, I changed the parameter orders here. sure why like, the, um, uh, my modes don't show up here again, but I think it um, should look fine. So, um, currently my shader uses the inverse. confused why why the mix points does the opposite of what I thought to do. So let's 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 control like, like do this structured. So we select the points. The points there it looks like we have um, we have the selection there and this means there are selected only in the center, if I can increase this, we can also see that. So then we do all kinds of things. So let's maybe we take a tangent here, apply some noise, and then we use this to mix. And we draw this. And maybe we ignore the soft transform stuff here. So now we see that. Uh, the noise is being applied to the outer ranges, but we want to have it at the inner ranges, which means that this should be inverted. stupid. Of course, um, this will always be, so we should, um, it should be like this. Stupid me. I mean, of course, like the, like if this is an incremental, I mean, I guess a switch would even be better, but I'm always scared about switching uh, float values. So, okay. Now, if we divide and conquer, this is what I wanted. So, the, the points come out only where I want them to be out. And then we can use the transform point stuff to actually do even more creepy things to these points. So, we could, if you want to, we can offset this and look at this. Uh, like, this is what I wanted. So, uh, we can move this grid around, which also might be interesting. 
Yeah, actually, this is just looks like an interesting thing we could animate. So um, let's drive this into uh, polynomials. And maybe we increase the amplitude here. It's going to be crazy, maybe less nervous and much slower. And uh, this we can actually looks kind of nice. So, and then of course right now our points are huge. Let's uh, get them to something useful again. Let's go back to our final result. Okay, what do we have here? So the, the the point the points moving outward we want to we want that to have very late. Um, which means, uh, like here with the lead sign, we have this guy here, this is the center, and okay, we could also, of course, animate the strength here, so then they would go back. I think it would be even nicer to just let the selection sphere dive slowly into the wall there. So we take this guy here, we add a back three, and then now if we offset this away from the wall, it will, nothing will be selected. This is what we animate there, and then we slowly let them let the wall dive into the wall. And um, can't be, it's like a little bit too noisy, so there are maybe there are just too many grid points here. So let's remove this, let's go to, let's say, 200 by 200. And the good thing about if it's like so little, so few grid points here, then we can actually use more advanced stuff. For it's like we could say, okay, these. These guys, they relieve a point trail, and then we can draw the point trails line. Trail points, point trail, draw lines. Let's add a group here. And let's so how does this look? Oh, gives it a little bit more of a shape here. And we still have like this transform point. So right now we are uh, doing all kinds of weird stuff with that. So if we, um, if we, once not scale it, it doesn't go that crazy. And then we can start to, um, to slowly animate like these guys here to make it like, to like a little dance. Dance, dance, dance. So, okay, we go here and we say, okay, this is a little dance. And here it's not dancing so much. So, okay, how does this look like? We have like this final thing, I guess we have to um, this one, the final thing, the camera should no longer be moving and probably move back. And I guess the easiest thing for that to do is to actually have a switch and either use like the like the procedure camera or like our controlled camera. So let's just add a camera here and a switch. switch. And then we take this guy here and this guy there. So default we use our procedure camera. 
And here we can say this guy is animated and is also animated there. And here finally we want to have like a one or controlled camera and this we can uh, maybe move this back a little bit. And you can go into the darkness, I think this would be nice. Nice end here. Okay, put the keyframe there. Go to the beginning. And, this is. and of course, be uh, right now we are all the time offsetting this guy here. So if we move, if we pause basically the pattern noise. So what happens if I push the other key from here? Key from there. And if I bring this down to zero, this doesn't return anymore. And then we still have the center guy here rotating like crazy. Um, maybe the frequency is a bit too high here as well. We can. I think that's nice. Probably good enough. Let me bring back. Okay, and that's the the point light is flickering here. And let's post this as well. So there's the point light. Switch point light. So it's going here. So we go in here and saying, okay, let's uh, animate the frequency from default, default to zero. It's still going like what? Why is it? Uh, Going like crazy. Oh, maybe I animated something else. I wanted to have this guy animated. Wait, this guy. Good. Okay, now I don't have to animate this guy. Probably should go into like a cube form again. We have to so hey, it's a cube. So which means we can take the select points guy here and to transform the add noise. And if we just take a keyframe here and move this down to zero, it should go into a cube. Very fast. Let's lower here. Actually, it almost looks like um, okay, like a little bit. What now drives me crazy is that. If you're looking here, the, the raster is not really matching the cube size, but maybe, uh, whatever, it's, I think it's just fine. Um, but it would be interesting, it almost looks like a screen cursor that could type something. So, um, we can have, let's say, we have a string, qubit, qubit. is even cuter. So and then we take uh, the string part 
text let's pipe this into after our camera because we don't want to mess with the camera here we take a group here oh, execute is also fine yeah. move this in there cube it let's take it like a techno font i think this guy ah look at that it's matching perfectly and we take a little is fine and we here take it to the left increase the font size let's move this guy a bit further uh, break so be be back um, so now we have this uh, so we can split this into characters and then we can say how many characters do we want to print why like this is this is horrible it should be this is definitely a bug because um, if I select two here then I wanted to see two two there uh, okay uh, but but we are making a demo so we don't have time to fix bugs let's go in here and let's increase this and then cube it and let's make it uh, there and scale it away a little bit and it's a little bit awkward that at the beginning so by default we are interpolating now uh, an integer and most of the time this should be constant but here we want to have a linear interpolation and you can change this if you go here to linear and then if we jump that I see the camera is moving back so actually I think it's stupid that it's not that the text is not being animated so we let's make a little bit room on the, on the right side here so um, this camera it goes into a group let's split this into a group again okay. yeah, why is it not splitting here doesn't want to let me split it stupid group. There we go, and then we hook it there. So it's moving with the with the cube, and uh, let's just size here and increase the size. It's nicely aligned. Would have been great if this would have actually matched the grid there. Boo! Boo! A wasted opportunity. I mean, it's almost matches. Ah, whatever. It's not that important. So, um, maybe bring it back a little bit uh, of text we only have like this uh, 2d thing here but we can just uh, transform it and move it a little bit further back so it matches it's closer to the plane there i know that i looking at that i think it it's it's too big i don't look i just don't like big text because i think it looks awkward so maybe we shrink it down a little bit and put it more to the, towards this guy here. And maybe below, maybe we put it below. This is the worst mistake you can make if you're like having a linear interpolation of camera positions. So this definitely has to be uh, horizontal. So okay. 
Okay. I think it's not too bad. I mean, later uh, they wanted to have the demo being an anaglyphic or something, so like two colors, uh, so red and a cyan split. So I think having too many colors there might not be a good idea. Um, so let's see, we have like this set material here and it's pure white. We have to set fork and it's, it's pure white, it's gray at least. Uh, we have the, where's the point, so here's like the point light, but uh, the point light is like, uh, yeah, it has, it has this like, yeah, I think it, oh, this looks nice, I have orange, but yeah, uh, I think we should stick with something more neutral here, so let's see, like if they want to have like a red cyan contrast, then everything perpendicular to this axis should be okay from a color. Let's go to greenish then a little bit. And uh, I think the text of those two can go a little bit there. Okay, I like this. Okay, um, and now, um, no, it's actually getting there. Ah, it is. Let's turn on item. Like here, we already see like these edges. This is bad because it reveals that we have three, that uh, we already uh, shows a little bit the effect we are trying to do later. So maybe quickly clean this up so it doesn't look too, too horrible on the on the, the recording. So um, what were, what did we have so far? Let's let's review this. So we have this. Um, this is the points on the on the grid plane there. And we have a grid points with cell mode, uh, only one, uh, like two axes, not no depth. Then we select some points with a uh, sphere selection mode. We move the center slowly towards the wall, the wall in the later parts. Then with the selected points, we have this point simulation. We add some noise, we animate the noise, we have a directional force that pushes the particles from the, away from the wall and then we use the new mix points mode 2 which is use uh, w uh, use the w uh, of the second point buffer for blending and then we transform these points so let them twirl around we add some twirls to the points and we group these so let's, let's call like this guy here wall points. So um, move it away. Then we have our original cube which we don't really need. We have a group here, a group here. So let's, let's clean this up. Um, which is okay. So it's always useful to have groups. With the grid points, we select these points, we animate the strength here with a fall off, but does this fall off do? It doesn't have an effect. Let's undo this. Actually, interestingly, okay, this does have an effect. So I'll move the keyframe here. But, um, so where are these lines coming? So if we draw the mesh here, if we draw them a little bit, uh, I think this, this is stupid. The way you can avoid it. So we already have that noise. If I change, like, is it the noise? No, it's not the noise. So it's 
transform points. The select thing here. Scale strength is doesn't have an effect either. Hmm. Meh. Why is it so imprecise? If they should overlap, okay. Like the easiest fix for that would be we just use our default cube in the beginning and we switch. I think. Um, uh, it's a demo we are not to fake. So um, we take a point, uh, uh, we take a cube, cube mesh, all mesh. Instead of this guy, we have a switch. We put a switch in there, Zook. there's our cube. For some reason, it's a like these guys are. Bigger? Why are they bigger? What? What? Let's go transform. Let's move them up a little bit. And let's. Uh, so there's a thing here. Uh, if you use minus two, it takes all entrance of a switch. So minus one takes none. Minus two takes all. So, uh, super useful settings uh, we used at Inventor um, for a while. Uh, ah, you, and then you already see that like the extent of the repeated cubes is, you know, precisely one unit, like the like the the centers, and then we add a cube to so the width of the cube is like the number of the cubes plus one and that's why where all like these weird sizes are coming from. Okay, now no, no, it's making sense. Um, which is okay, uh, we can just increase our cube here and say it should be, scale should be 11. Oh, no. Plus one, 11. So, exactly so, and now if we switch these guys here, we see a width and without flickering, and in the beginning we don't want any flickering, so we are taking your, we animate this guy, we go to there, one, and this is an integer, so we don't have to set a constant up here, starting. And here we can finally increase the size again. So we fill this up completely. This weird number. And I think now, I, I think it's actually too few cubes. The cool thing is that it's in bounds, which means if we can just, uh, we could just increase this number, should be more cubes. Looks more interesting. Let's increase the number further. So let's see how many cubes we can draw. Oh, it's getting slow. Not so. Oh, it's, uh, uh, the fill rate is like, so I think it's mostly like a fill rate issue. here it's fast enough it looks nice
I think that like here we can actually go back into the cube within the cube, which means um, so we go back into the noise and we uh, add a keyframe here, and put a keyframe there, keyframe there, keyframe there, and then we uh, bring the noise back. So it's more like an interesting thing. And then we wanted to have like the, you remember in the beginning, we wanted to have like the rotating cube within the cube. So now we have like a higher cube resolution, that might actually look better. Um, and actually now that I think of it, maybe let's switch to like the full screen power mode here, we can actually, since now we are tweaking visuals, uh, it's probably horrible for this, uh, for the tutorial video because it's really hard to read stuff, but now we are uh, for like tweaking stuff. I think this full view really helps me a lot. So let's switch back to um, the full HD here. Or oh, maybe, maybe it feels okay. Um, so we want here to bring it back. And then we wanted to have like the, the select points. We want to rotate the center here. We wanted to animate this uh, the rotation. Okay, here we are rotating. We are overriding the time and yeah, and then rotating. So if we go in here and say um, we are. Um, the points and bringing down the scale would this bring would this give us, give us the the cube within the cube so now everything is going back here and now if I go in this guy and if I Better camera perspective here. So we want to have like this. It's not really negative. Ah, I wanted to. We wanted to inverse the fall up, I think. I know if I remove this, we should see like a cube being rotated within the cube. I think these are slightly too much like computer suffers. Uh, if we bring down the fall off as well and further shrink down the size. And then here we have like the offset W, which is animated. So does this now give us a, yeah, it gives us the rotating cube from the cube, which is actually nice. I think it looks nice. We could also leave it at the beginning. Oh, look at this. Lots of, lots of, lots of cubes. And um, The select point stuff is still a little bit too big. We don't really see the cube rotating within the cube. 
And the center should be the center is also like rotating a bit, maybe a bit too much. So we have the pill noise here and we are adding this to the center. I think it's a little bit too much. So let's bring this down a bit. Actually, I, I like the, 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 the square within the square there. It's almost like a design element. <laughs> and it's moving, still keeping moving around. But I, I, it's probably uh, more confusing to the audience. So like, uh, yeah, but I think it's getting there. So we, uh, let's animate the scale here and let's make this a constant. Maybe switch back to the original mode so you guys can actually see what's going on. So, um, so it should be, let's hold Alt here. We don't need this keyframe anymore. And um, we want to change it back to one. So it, this should be constant. So, which means that it, we are seeing the, the, the cube within the cube all the time. But then, uh, when once we are done, we are, we, it's, it's becoming a cube. Maybe we can uh, actually, uh, maybe we should animate this here. So, a keyframe here, and we add, actually, I think, let's remove this keyframe and then interpolate them nicely linear. So it's sucking it in. Okay. Well, I think it's not too bad. So let's add a little bit of post effect and then we are done. Uh, then the demo is done and then we have to uh, uh, we have to export it. So let's see how this goes. So um, we are here. We didn't do any post effect whatsoever, which is good. Um, because uh, applying post effects too early will give you like a wrong impression and then you will think you will think looks awesome. But if it looks awesome without a post effect, everything looks much better with post effects. So let's try that appeared for, for starters. Uh, let's see how this goes. Um, so we hang there, and then we go in here and say we adjust take the focus distance to uh, what? What's even going on? What is like the what would be like the correct focus distance to see stuff that is. Um, Increase this weight here. It would be like a. This is too far. Ah, no. Huh? Why? Why is that? If the focus distance and the near range is, the switch camera. We have the regular camera here. No. No. Why is this? This is this is a super bad default setting here. This is bad, 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 bad. Let's make this the new default. Um, so, um, okay, this one looks more reasonable. You get in here. Oh, look at this. Look at this nice bookie stuff. And then we can actually 
take this guy here and uh, this is texture output. Let's add some glow. Glow, more glow. So, and maybe we, um, we offset this a little bit, the knee. Uh, so you only see, only like the super bright stuff glows. And now if we take the light here and adjust the light color. Where's the point light? Point light, point light, point light. Here's the point light. Everything is super spread out. Just credit text. This was the original random camera. Who built this? Everything is so unorganized. So let's move this here. This is our controlled final camera. Let's call this guy shifting final scene. This is the point light. So let's make a copy and call this bigger light. So, and uh, so let's go back to our glowed guy here. And now if we would increase this drastically, we should see more bloom stuff. And if we go in here in the material settings of our cube, all points, this is our cube, cube. We set a material here and we have a roughness here, so if we change this to, we increase the, the metalness, maybe like a, okay, like if it's too rough, then it's like too crazy. Okay, this is way too much glow. Maybe like the way is just too small. No, it's way too much glow. Let's tint this a little bit. I like how like this guy is being uh, glowed totally off of the walls. Uh, uh, okay, probably. So um, so basically, like, this is a problem. So we want to have like the camera position distance to our center, and the length should be like this. It should be the focus distance. And this is uh, how can we actually do this? Um, um, I think there's something called like a reference position or so, or a locator. So we have this locator here. I think we can put this locator somewhere, and then we can take the position here, and the length of this locator should be the distance to the camera. No, it should not. Like the, the position of this guy to this guy should be at the distance to the camera. So can we get camera properties? There's a real camera here. Why is there two of these? Position of it. There's a camera position. Okay, in the camera position once. What like, like what? What's even going? Why does it have a variable? This is so weird. 
so it has a position it has a position and I can use it here I guess can I take this guy here I have a locator I get a position here So the length of this guy should be should be the length to the camera, I think. So um, we need a length, a magnitude. So okay, this should be easy. We take uh, add back two or something. Add back this. So duplicate this new type. Wag, and we call this magnitude. turns the length of a vector 3 duplicate. We go in here and we go to magnitude and we say uh, we don't need anything but a vector. We only need one vector. We call this input and we return the output return is so we have to always change the number here if we change the type. Never forget it, otherwise to the crash. We want to float, return value, we don't need this. Um, we don't need this. Update action and the result value is now the input get value dot length. There we go, a magnitude operator. Back here, we take this guy here. This goes, and I don't know. Like if this works, well, that would be super handy. Focus distance. What does it say? The focus distance is. Huh? What? What's been going on? Camera position. Does it want like a? Takes the ah, stupid me, of course. Yeah, it has to go there because it's either this camera or this camera active and should work for both. And the camera position is it like so? It's not updating here for some reason, which is probably because camera position needs to be. Any camera position, position, come position, what was the name? And it is animated. So it takes the context word to camera and it words it. Like this is not being used, so we can quickly remove this. This is super confusing. So it has a valid camera because this thing here, like this is the initial camera position, but uh, it's This is so stupid. The problem is that um, so um, this is really tricky. So um, it gets, I think it's get, it's just being evaluated twice. So one for like this thing, and another time for this thing. And so um, we somehow would have to prevent that. Oh, this is this is tricky. I think like the easiest way would be to uh, make. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this so. This is a bitch. 
Das ist wirklich tricky, tricky, tricky. How do we do this? Um, does this guy have something like a reference? No. Maybe somehow I only... So let's, let's first check our hypothesis. So the camera position, our assumption is that it's being evaluated twice within a frame. Block, so let's see how this is. Block, debug, uh, camera position, update. Updated only once. Ha! <laughs> that is so. This is stupid. Okay, let's let's build a workaround. We only we update this guy only if it's connected to a command, and only then we update it. And then so we can actually control when it's being updated. So um, I think this, this might be a breaking change to this camera position, but I uh, probably most nobody ever used it a lot. Oh, I don't really want to have this to be in. We want this to be in. Let's take an input from somewhere else from this magnitude guy here. Input here, we change the unique ID. The type is. No, actually. It's the output. The output. This was correct. On the right side, we want to have an output. The output is of type. Um, this we don't want. This is the command. This is the type as command. Command. Let's say, maybe I should save once. Maybe save this guy so we haven't saved at all. So now I'm doing some more complicated things. Don't want it to crash. Okay. So we added a new command thing. This guy is animated, so it will be updated all the time, but it's the only one that's being updated, command update action. And the other guys, we clear, and so now we should have uh, a complete control of when this guy is being, so we don't need to call locate anymore because we can take this directly to the magnitude and this goes into when we want to update it. The locator can go and we see some better values in there. I think it's better, it's much better. It's not, I'm not sure if it's actually working correctly, but they, uh, the values look all right. So uh, let's see what. Uh, so we are very far away. We are close to it. We are far away. We are very far. So like the, like this roughly matches. So um, maybe there's like some kind of factor here. So let's, let's try to multiply this a little bit. So. No. This is still, this is a thousand. Make samples. Maybe increase this like crazy. This is there an offset here. Let's remove this. So, how 
so to, for it to be sharp. Ah, we are in the center of the cube. So maybe we should like focus a little bit the front, something like this. So if you move away. I mean, it seems to be working, but I don't know why it's double. It's like so, so strange. That's good. Well, okay. Well, well we did something here. Um, so the, these guys are they actually uh, like the lines? Let's check if they are drawing. Uh, where do we have the line? They draw lines. Are they setting their writing depth? Okay. I mean, if we would increase their we can actually see some depth of field there too. Maybe we can make them a little bit less dominant. Oh, wait a second. We later have like this. Uh, later it should be. I still have to see like how we do this anamorphic stuff. I think it's good enough. So let's quickly go through like one run, tweak some parameters, uh, and uh, then we try to export it. Um, so um, if we switch here, like the first thing I, I noticed that it's like, um, so we have like these gaps here. So this is because we adjusted the size of this, uh, maybe of the select point or of the draw points here. Let's see, um, maybe this is the fall off or the strength. Maybe the strength here or the fall off. What is it? I don't know what do you think. This is the wall points. We actually, we want to be here in the cube, select points. So we scale it there. We add a noise, we transform the points, we offset the W thing. And I think we wanted to have like. This must be uh, like more like a complete set here. And um, okay, much better. Then I think like the, in the background we now have like this bluish tone. I think this will be a problem later. Yeah. So like here, you know, it's it's tuned to what's the blue, uh, blue, and we want to have like this anamorphic stuff, uh, it will be too much of a, of a distraction because then we have this sighing here. So it, oh, let's tweak this down a little bit. So talking about, it, about this color. So then this is also towards the blue. Let's check here. Yeah, red, green, blue. So this is definitely blue color. So also let's move this a little bit toward something there and maybe here this is like 
environment now the query is strong. Oh, we have live update all the time. Expensive. Um, let's bring this down a little bit. Then, um, like the thing here come down a little bit, but I think they, they could come uh, uh, probably nicer if they would move out earlier. So we have the, this guy here, and I assume the select points, this guy. So let's see if this is like, so if we move this here closer, yeah, so uh, we move this further away, it should stay cleaner. And then I think the overall camera is like a little bit too far away now. So we had like this random camera here with the pearly noise uh, and then we animated the scale here. I, know, I don't know if you can remember, but um, I think uh, here for the final part, we should bring it a little bit closer home. So towards the cube. So we see actually this shape within the shape there. Once in a while we have some very close-up shots there, which I don't mind actually. The nice thing is with this change that we uh, we are not intercepting the camera in the background anymore. Um, one thing we can also tweak is that with the random light, the flickering, do -do 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 -do, that uh, I think we could amplify the, the pulsating uh, synthesizer sound there a little bit. So we have the flickering light here, and uh, you see we have a counter here which with uh, six, 16 notes. Um, let's quickly check how far we maybe we can increase the size here a little bit. And then um, let's also maybe let maybe we can try to make it flicker. So let's uh, take an animated value, so a little bit like an FO. Currently the intensity is two, so let's increase this. Maybe we, uh, let's see how this goes. But we put this to intensity, and we want to have it. Uh, on the 16th, it should be a saw, and uh, the offset would be like two. So now it should. but a, a slight thing goes a long while. So we had like this, we, you remember we, anim, we stopped the final uh, rate here. And of course we now want to have the same thing here for like this guy and we can't copy the keyframes just yet. This is a feature request and it will come eventually. So we create a value, we call this uh, flicker speed. We go in here, we say initially the flicker speed is one, animated. Yeah, this works not this book like the charm. So this is there. So uh, it should be one initially and then we uh, jump to zero, this is a constant, and we pipe this to oh, wait a second, let's first create like this animation, otherwise it will get very confusing. Wait. Ah, and it should be 
to put me to initial weight should be 60. So that should go into the right. It should go into the right. You know what you think of it? Like here's the weight is the first parameter and here is the this should be aligned. It's interesting that the final point light position is like just on the cube. I, 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 I don't know. I think uh, we should uh, we should offset this. Um, we go here. This is the you override the time, and uh, let's just add something there. So we uh, is there a face here? No, there's no face. So let's um, go in here. Ah, wait a second, this is a counter. So once again, like this is the same thing. This will be um, different in every in every one. I think this is bad. Um, so initially I would say, okay, uh, it wouldn't make much of a problem, but now we want to tweak and having like this final light there. So see, now it's there. Before this, it was there. So like having this counter there, it's like, it's, uh, like this statefulness is not good there. Um, so let's just take an image value, we floor this. Yeah, we, 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 we floor that. Um, we take this to the this guy here. Yeah, everything look there. Um, and we take an endless guy and the good thing is we have the flicker speed now, we can just rotate it to the, uh, we can use it as the rotation. So let's see. And um, this didn't work at all. Oh no, it, it worked. So we, um, we have some pearly noise there and we get some random positions the pattern noise and maybe increase like this a little bit further. So now we have this black thing here and everything is under control, which means we can add just a random value and it will be always predictable. So we make some space here, we add a value um, and it should probably be an integer value. Oh, and it doesn't really matter. So we can actually see, okay, what would be nice, a nice position for the light? Or like the uh, for the shading, final shading here. And maybe like this could be. I think the light uh, it should be a little bit bigger. And maybe a little bit further in front. So let's try again with different light settings here. Just try it. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, let's take this. Okay.
Okay, that's nice. So let's let's export that. So um, we go in here, and I don't know like if this works out of the box. I'm completely baffled. Of course, we still have the problem that like the sound rig is a wave, which is huge. But let's see. So zum uh, definition export as executable. So we see done. No warnings. This sounds ominous. Um, let's go in here and we go to export player. I can't believe that this is working out of the box. It's not. Oh. I think I will have to rebuild the player or something. Okay, I can I can fix this offline, but uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know if this was actually useful or not. Uh, probably not very instructional, but at least you saw the process, uh, the process a little bit how I uh, how I do these kind of things, and maybe it was maybe you learned something. Okay, see you later. Bye.